guys, welcome back. Mom and Dr. Jones, OBGYN and Mom24. Today we are going through some Twitter myths I've seen going around about birth control. I'm doing this video in conjunction with bedsider.org, which is a super awesome website with evidence-based information about birth control. They did not sponsor this video. I am just a huge fangirl, although they have now sent me some sweet swag in support of their Thanks Birth Control Day. If you're not subscribed, hit that little subscribe button. It makes me super happy and we have a lot of fun here. It's the little things in life that count. We're gonna jump right into dispelling birth control myths after this. Now, I wanna preface this by saying, I am not here to attack anyone who tweeted these things, and I don't want you guys to do that either. We're just here to dispel some myths, and I'm going to purposefully leave out the name of the people who tweeted these because I don't want you guys attacking them. That is not the goal of this. Number one, it has 11,000 retweets, and it says, birth control is a scam, ladies. Don't let these doctors poison your wounds. It's not a scam, listen. I understand that hormonal birth control is not for everyone, and I certainly don't have a vested interest in everyone being on it. However, there's no scam to this. I and every other OBGYN who talks to you about contraceptives are invested in making you have the tools you need to either prevent pregnancy or treat whatever you have going on that needs to be treated and could potentially be treated with hormones like estrogen and progesterone. It may not be right for everyone. It does not poison your womb. It's just an option to prevent unintended pregnancy if that's something that you're interested in. Number two, the Depo birth control shot leads to cervical cancer. My mom is walking proof. If you're on it, get off of it, please. Retweet to save a life. This has 10,700 retweets and is just absolutely false. I'm kind of trying to figure out where this may have come from because anytime there's these myths going around, I really think they're probably rooted in some truth that is just kind of misunderstood. So what they're referring to, Depo, is medroxy progesterone injection that you get every three months. It's very effective at preventing pregnancy and it doesn't cause cervical cancer. The cause of cervical cancer in 98 plus percent of cases is human papillomavirus, and that's sexually transmitted. So people who are having sex tend to get on contraception. I can see where that could be extrapolated to, oh, more people on this birth control end up getting HPV or end up getting cervical cancer, but that's not because it's related to the birth control, it's related to the reason people get on birth control, which is to prevent pregnancy, which means they're having sex, which means they have a higher chance of getting HPV, which causes cervical cancer. You don't have to get off of Depo-Provera to decrease your chances of getting cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is largely preventable, not 100%, but largely preventable by both Gardasil vaccine and regular pap smears. So it's not get off of your birth control to prevent cervical cancer. It's get regular care, have safe sex if you're having sex, be vaccinated against the HPV virus. And we can talk about HPV virus um, at some point. I've made an Instagram post about it, uh, which I'll try to link below, but we can do a video on that at some point as well. Number three. Okay, so this one has 2,600 retweets and 9,800 likes, and it says, I don't know if it's just me, but being on birth control to not have a baby right now and then later getting off and not being able to conceive is also effing scary to me. Okay, so this is another one that may be rooted in some legitimate concern, but is maybe just a little bit misunderstood. This is a fear that I'm on birth control now and when I get off, I won't be able to have a baby when I want to. And that could certainly happen, but it wouldn't be because you were on the birth control. They don't increase your chances of infertility. It can be correlated with a delayed interval to returning to normal ovulation when you get off the contraception. So if somebody wants to get pregnant, I would like them to come in and talk to me about their planned time frame for that before they stop their birth control pill or get their IUD out or whatever, so that we can talk about what a average length of time for that particular contraceptive method 
it is to go back to having normal cycles. You also have to think about, was I treating irregular cycles with that? There's a whole myriad of things that go into this. And this doesn't mean as soon as you go off your birth control, you'll definitely get pregnant. It just means being on the birth control is not going to make you have infertility. Birth control does not cause infertility, period. I make that, that punny joke in every video. All right, number four, this one has 31,000 retweets and 129,000 likes. Last night, my 35 year old friend had a pregnancy scare because she didn't know antibiotics reduce the effectiveness of birth control. Ladies, how many of you know this? I sure didn't. Want to lower the abortion rate, improve comprehensive sex ed, don't ban abortions. Okay. This is like two things in one tweet. It's a double tweet. <laughs> I'm so weird. So antibiotics reduce the effectiveness of birth control. This is kind of true. There are some antibiotics which can reduce the effectiveness of birth control. Most commonly used antibiotics do not affect your birth control effectiveness. Antibiotics are all very different. There's hundreds of kinds of antibiotics. So they don't all interact with each other or with other medications. There are a couple which can decrease how well your birth control works. I would say nine times out of 10 or more, birth control is not going to be decreased in effectiveness. Just ask the person prescribing it or ask the pharmacist when you pick it up. Now, the second part of that is, want to lower abortion rates, improve comprehensive sex ed. Yes, improving comprehensive sex ed absolutely would contribute to lower incidence of unintended pregnancy and lower desire for termination of pregnancy. Uh, yeah, that's what I do on this channel, right? Yes, we improve sex education and a lot of other things. And sometimes make you laugh and then sometimes make you cringe. And sometimes I'm serious and most of the time I'm not. And I don't know why you watch this, but I'm glad you're here. All right, this is a good one. Number five, this one has 827 retweets and 3,700 likes. And it says, imagine taking a drug designed to target a healthy part of your body and make it stop functioning. That's what birth control does. Many young girls are never taught fertility awareness about their body and cycle. Instead, they're put on contraceptives. This isn't healthcare. Okay. I'm not gonna include her name, but I will say that this is from somebody who I would not take any medical advice from ever. So I'm having trouble responding to it without being snarky, but I'm gonna try. Again, if you figure out who I'm talking about, just please don't go harass them. We're here to learn. We're not here to get angry at other people unless they're, you know, the person in my last video. Don't go harass that person either. Yes, contraceptive is technically designed to target a healthy part of your body and make it stop working. Uh, make it work differently, actually. However, I mean, I guess that just depends what we call healthy because yeah, it's healthy and working correctly if you're ovulating and able to get pregnant, but if you don't want to be pregnant, then decreasing your ability to get pregnant is actually healthy for other parts of your body, like, you know, your brain and everything else. Being on contraceptives decreases your chances of all kinds of complications related to being pregnant, including having a baby that you were not intending to have. So this is just crazy, just a very manipulative and incorrect attitude towards contraception. So then we have the separate second part of this tweet, which says many young girls are never taught fertility awareness about their body and cycle. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. That's again, why I'm here. However, you can't expect healthcare to take on that entire role. I love educating you guys about your body and your health, but if someone comes to me and says, I wanna be on birth control, I can't take now the next hour to go, well, actually, let's talk about fertility awareness, particularly because fertility awareness is only effective as preventing pregnancy and people who are very, very motivated to use it as their manner of preventing pregnancy. So it's great for those people, but they have to be super motivated to learn about it. They also have to have really regular cycles. So that's not a great option for a whole lot of people who end up being on contraceptives. So this is healthcare. Providing adequate prevention of pregnancy for people is health care. I don't know what else to say about that. I'm kind of angry. 
Last one. This one has 8,200 retweets and 32,000 likes. The pill, injection, implant, etc. definitely have more cons than pros. Does horrid horrid things to your mind and how you feel? <sighs> this tweet just really encompasses a lot of what is wrong with society in general, like cancel culture, just this black and white thinking of like, because I was on a contraceptive and it had more cons than pros, that is the law of the land for everybody. This doesn't make any sense, right? Pros and cons are personal. So to some people, contraceptives of all types definitely have more cons than pros. But I and many other people happen to find the pros of contraceptives to be way better than the cons. I love birth control pills. That is my preferred manner of contraceptive. It helps my skin look better. I feel better on it. It helps with my mood stability. I don't have as heavy periods. I don't have as many cramps. I personally find the pros of birth control pills to be higher than the cons for me. And I'm just one person. But I know there are plenty of you out there who agree with that. There are always cons to all types of contraceptives to all kinds of medicines. There's also cons to not being on those. So this is a personal thing and it depends what you're looking for and what you wanna do. Thank you Birth Control for providing me the ability to family plan as I want to. Check out bedsider.org. If you haven't watched my video about all the different types of contraceptive, I will link that. Go talk to your doctor or your advanced practice provider about what kind of contraceptive is best for you. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me, in the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.